What exactly is a bumblebee? Let's learn the characteristics, needs, and life cycle of bumblebees. I'm Jeff with the Backyard Birds Channel. I recently began studying bumblebees in eastern South Dakota. If you like videos like this, consider subscribing to my channel. Furthermore, you can support my channel by joining me on Patreon. As always, thanks for watching. The bumblebee colony begins in the spring with a single mated queen that overwintered. She emerges from her wintering site and seeks out a location to start her nest. She collects pollen and nectar from flowers to start the colony. She lays her first eggs to raise the first generation of workers. Workers are sterile female bees and make up most of the colony. The queen is generally much larger than the workers. Once the first workers hatch and mature, they assume the duties of collecting nectar and pollen for subsequent generations of workers. As the workers collect nectar and pollen, she stays in the nest to lay more eggs. Later in the season, the female lays unfertilized eggs that become male bumblebees known as drones. At this time, she also lays fertilized eggs that are fed a special diet and become new queen bumblebees. The new queens and drones leave the colony to seek mates, likely from other colonies. The mated queens will seek out a site to overwinter. By the end of the season, the old queen, the workers, and the drones all die. It is up to the new queen to start the cycle again. There are three main divisions of a bumblebee's body. The head has the antenna, eyes, and tongue, as well as the face, cheek, and vertex. The thorax is where the legs and wings attach. A bumblebee has six legs and two pairs of wings. The muscles of the thorax control their movements. Females have a hairless area on their hind legs they use for collecting pollen. The abdomen contains their organs and is divided into segments called tergites. Females have six tergites, but males have seven. Only females have a stinger and it is located at the tip of the abdomen. They may use their stinger if their nest is threatened, but at flowers they are preoccupied with collecting nectar and pollen. Bumblebees are large bees and you can hear their buzz as they fly. Their bodies are covered in colored hair which gives them their unique appearance. Most bumblebees are black and yellow, but can also have red, orange, or white on them. There are three requirements for a successful bumblebee colony. The queen needs a site, usually underground, where she can overwinter undisturbed. When she emerges in the spring, she needs a suitable place where she can build a nest and grow the colony. Floral resources that provide nectar and pollen are needed throughout the season for her and her offspring. I've never found an overwintering bumblebee, but they overwinter underground. Nor have I ever found a bumblebee nest, which can be found above or below ground, depending on the species. Mostly, I see them visiting flowers for nectar and pollen. I knew flowers were critical for their prosperity, so I started encouraging more of them. One of their favorites is the annual Rocky Mountain Bee Plant. The perennial lance leaf figwort is a favorite early in the season. Yet another favorite among them is the annual buffalo burr. But almost any flowering plant will be visited by bumblebees, and it's important to provide multiple kinds throughout the growing season. There are roughly 4,000 species of bees north of Mexico. Bumblebees make up a small fraction of these and consist of 46 species known to the United States and Canada. The state of South Dakota is known to have 29 species, but some haven't been seen for decades. Based on my observations, Southeast South Dakota has four common bumblebees. Depending where you live in the United States or Canada, you will find different species. Most bumblebees you encounter are workers, which are sterile females. The brown-belted bumblebee is probably the most common species in my area. Another common species in my area is the American bumblebee. 
The common eastern bumblebee is also common in my area. Early in the season, the two-spotted bumblebee is common in my area. I've also seen a single southern plains bumblebee on my property. And only once did I find a yellow bumblebee on my property. There are other insects that can mimic bumblebees. This fly is the eastern yellow-backed Lafria. Its larvae feed on moist, rotten wood. You won't see these flies feeding at flowers like bumblebees do. It's a type of robber fly and a predator of other insects. It mimics bumblebees so it can easily capture its prey of flying insects. Sometimes I photograph bees at flowers, but if I want to get images that show all parts of a bee, I capture it. The bees are captured in plastic jars and placed in the refrigerator. This slows down their metabolism but doesn't kill them. Once they are chilled, I can photograph them from different angles. After they warm up, they fly away unharmed. To learn this technique, follow the link at the top of the video. To identify a bumblebee, it is important to have images of different parts of the bee. Photograph the bee from the side to capture views of the head, thorax, and abdomen. Photograph the top of the head to capture hair color. Photograph the head from the front to capture its face. Photograph the head, thorax, and abdomen from the top. Photograph the end of the abdomen from the top. Photograph a blank picture to mark the end of the set as you likely will be photographing multiple bees. I find bumblebee identification challenging at best. Individual bees within a species can be variable in appearance. Within a species, the females do not look like the males. Some queens look different from their workers. Their size may not be uniform even within a species. Besides the common social bumblebees, there are the rarer cuckoo bumblebees. My best advice is to learn the bumblebees common in your area. To aid in identification, I submit my bumblebee images to various sites where experts will identify the images. I began with Bumblebee Watch as bumblebees are their focus. But I also like using the iNaturalist app and site because I use it to record all living things I encounter. You can also submit images to Bug Guide whose focus is insects, spiders, and their kin. Each site has people who will help to identify your bumblebees. There is also an app called Bee Machine that can help you identify your bumblebees. Find links to these in the video description. I hope this video helps you to understand and observe our bumblebees. Look at the video description for books on bumblebee identification. There are also links to bumblebee identification PDFs. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Do you have a question? Leave a comment and I will respond. If you know someone who could learn from this video, share it with them. Hi, it's Jeff. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Click on the bell to be the first to know about my new videos. Go a step further and join me on Patreon to support my effort to bring you the content that you desire. You can watch more of my videos to learn about nature.